and I have a very small body. However, when it came to the competition for the intellectual stuff in the STEM field, I was not so far behind. And I said, okay, maybe this is where I can develop my strength. Being a Korean is no longer a limiting factor in our career development in America. 이 프로그램은 글로벌 차병원 바이오그룹이 운영하는 최첨단 종합병원 할리우드 차병원 제공입니다. Good afternoon, and I'd like to thank uh, NBC for having me over here so I can share my experience with, especially with our next generation. I'd like to talk about love of science and professional development. First, my curriculum was I received a bachelor's in Korea, and I came to America to get my uh, master's and PhD in the field of food chemistry. And I also did some postdoctoral training in molecular biology, which really opened up uh, you know, my expertise into the deeper sciences. I was born and raised and educated in Korea. As everybody has experienced back then, right after the Korean War, all the boys and girls were separated. We have to wear uniforms and we have to have a very, very short haircut, which all the girls really hated. And then around the time, I also noticed that this system is really biased for the boys. Even after graduation, there were not many guarantees for the professional opportunities for girls. And around the same time, I also learned that, oh, I was relatively good in math and science. And I have a very small body. However, when it came to the competition for the intellectual stuff in the STEM field, I was not so far behind. And I said, okay, maybe this is where I can develop my strength. Turned out to be that observation was very good because even to this day, STEM fields really offers a great opportunity to women and minorities. It's not affected by political decisions. It's not affected by anything else, but only limited by your own effort and, uh, and intellectual capacity. So automatically, I heard in America, guys always open the doors for the girls and they really respected the woman. And I said, wow, that's a dream come true. I'm going to go to America to get studies. And my main goal was not to get a man, rather to get a PhD. And I was able to do it. And I eventually I worked really, really hard and I became a professor. During the time, I graduated about 20 master's and PhD students. In order to maintain these students and the laboratory, only place that I can get the money for it was the federal grants. So I have to secure the federal grants, meaning I have to write so many proposals. And at that time, you have realized that, hey, my, my competitor is no longer Korean woman. They are all American professors. They are very handsome and tall, and they are mostly men, and they spoke perfect English. And I said, what can I do? Around the time, my uh, English mentor professor came and he goes, you know what? You need to get out of the lab a little more. You need to uh, network with the rest of the people. Let, you, let them know how good you are. I took his advice and I said, okay, I'm gonna join and participate in every single professional conferences and meetings that I go to. And you will be amazed how many people actually recognized the ability I was able to do it. What I did was actually worked out very well because that's where I got the announcement that there was a vacancy and opportunity at FDA and eventually that led me to join the FDA. So when I went to FDA, I could no longer do the research I wanted to do. Now I was bound by a lot of legal issues. Now I had to work as a regulatory chemist. And I'm going to show you what is involved with it. But before I start anything, when I went to FDA, I realized, oh my gosh, FDA really does a lot of stuff. And the only reason why we have a healthy, healthy food and then we can rely, rely on the safety and the nutrition of the food is because FDA is actually regulating them. FDA has many different fields, drugs, medical devices, radiation, animal food, tobacco, cosmetics. And also, FDA has been very well known in regulating the quality and the safety of the drugs. However, with the recent changes in American political system, now America really does not really generate a lot of food we consume. For example, in case of the seafood, 95% actually comes from the overseas, where American uh, US government has no control of 
overseeing the qualities. FDA started really putting a lot of pressure on ensuring the safety of food, and that is the program that I am in. In the food, there are two major types of hazard, microbial hazard and chemical hazard. Usually the chemical hazards are coming from the uh, chemical contaminants, something like antibiotics, pesticide toxins, and economically added adulterants and the heavy metals. I'm going to talk a little bit about economically adulterated chemical compounds. You probably heard of the melanin. And that has been found about 15 years ago. In America, it was killing a lot of uh, pet, pet animals. And in the, at the same time, in China, a lot of children were starting to die. What happened was, as you can see in the structure, melamine in the body system breaks down to, into cyanuric acid. And then they have this perfect ionic match. They actually form a crystal so strong, actually, you can, your body can no longer break down. They actually, they become like a stones and they actually end up accumulating in the kidney until kidney actually fails out and then, and then leading to death. Unfortunately, a lot of our children, a lot of babies got affected because their only source of food was infant formula. A lot of them were actually, uh, 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 was contaminated. Very sad story there. So now I want to talk about a very important field of antibiotics. Some antibiotics are approved for the uh, treatment of anim food animals I'm talking about. However, the illegal use of antibiotics is, their lists are very, very limited. As you can see, with a massive explosion of the uh, world population, the, the food animals, we call them an food animals, they also the, has to be produced in the mass quantities. As a result of it, they end up ha living in a very substandard environment. Sometimes the sanitation is not good, and sometimes they are more prone to be sick. So what they do is, in order to uh, help them to survive better, what they do is they give a low level of antibiotics, both through the drinking waters as well as through the feet. And sometimes they are so low, it's really, really difficult to detect it. However, on the scale, national scale, when they are going into the environment as well as our food system, it affects the human health. On top of that, as a byproduct, it generates resistant bacteria. So if you happen to be infected with a bacteria, even in your own backyard, you cannot do the surgery unless you just remove the parts of the body. And that's how dire this situation is. So we need to really pay attention to the illegal use of antibiotics. We have to make sure that nobody is doing this kind of things. And the only way to do it is by doing the analysis. So regulatory chemistry actually is mainly targeted for the unapproved antibiotics, as well as veterinary drugs and toxins. The US has a, a policy of zero tolerance. So what we are chasing is, it can go down and down and down, so low to a degree. Sometimes it feels like it is there. You cannot quite control it. However, you know it's there. So what you have to do is you have to use extremely sensitive method that can regulate and detect the compounds at the levels that FDA wants to regulate. So I've been working at FDA for almost 15 years. Our government, our workplace is protected by what they call No Fear Act. It is for anti-discrimination and anti-harassment against the race, gender, religion, age, which is the dream come true for the, for the people like me and Koreans, because we are not indigenous people here, we are not main white people, and also we look very different too. And so, and then especially some of us, we are females, and you can tell, and the, we are pr well protected in our workplace. And even as a minority like myself, I, am, I feel like when I go to work, I know nobody's going to harass me for what I want to do. And nobody's going to speak loudly, bigger than my, my voice, to obscure my opinion. So that has been a great uh, experience. Being a Korean is no longer a limiting factor in our career development in America. So with that, I like to tell you that it's not my single effort, it's the every scientist and every engineer who come together to transfer this excitement of learning science to our younger generation. I hope that spirit still lives on and I hope our the younger Korean generation really pays on to this field because I know 
Koreans, especially their brain system is really wired to do very well in the STEM field. So that's all, and thank you so much for your attention. 이 프로그램은 글로벌 차병원 바이오그룹이 운영하는 최첨단 종합병원 할리우드 차병원 제공이었습니다.